what is one of the most fascinating black history tales that you've ever encountered? I'm going to answer that by talking about Elijah McCoy who was born in Colchester, Ontario in 1844, the son of refugees from the American slavery system. He was a bright kid who was supported by his parents, managed to become educated, and in fact was sent overseas and attended the University of Edinburgh, got a degree and was certified as a mechanical engineer, came back to North America and decided to go to Detroit to try his um, luck at finding work there. While he was there, he was unable to find work because of racism, and while he was there, he took a job on the railroads, as so many black men did in his time and continuing on through decades and decades of North American life. While he was there, he observed that many young boys were getting injured because at that time, uh, some particular part of the steam engine of trains was not, they were not able to lubricate it um, unless they stopped, or, or they were not able to stop the engines in order to lubricate them. So they sent quite young boys who had the small size to go in and lubricate the machines while they were still working. And it just so happened that most of these were young black boys, many of them who were getting injured. And he came up with the idea of a lubricating cup, a self-lubricating device that would allow the machine to lubricate itself without it's some, you know, some unfortunate kid being sent in there to do this job and possibly risk his life. And that device became so successful and that it was copied many times, but people didn't want the copies. They wanted the real thing and they started asking for the real McCoy. And that's where that expression comes from. And that was, was one proof of several of Elijah McCoy's genius. However, Elijah McCoy was never able to be recognized for his accomplishments. People could not accept that a black man could be as brilliant as he was. And unfortunately, he ended his life in uh, an insane, well, I, I guess, uh, a sanatorium for the, uh, for the insane. Literally driven mad by racism. Now that's a story that has so many elements. It tells us something about our Canadian history. It tells us about society at the time. And it's, um, it's a tragic tale in and of itself. So I would say I find that story fa fascinating just in and of itself. But I also draw lines from there to the life of Oliver Bowen, who was also a descendant of African-Americans refugees from um, American racism who fled um, lynchings and mobs and all kinds of um, anti-black activity in Oklahoma to come up here in 1910 at the same time that my great-grandfathers and grandmothers came. And uh, about a hundred years separated the births of Oliver Bowen and Elijah McCoy. And yet in many ways their stories were similar. Oliver Bowen also, bright, inquisitive kid, um, educated, became educated, encouraged by his family, went to the University of Alberta, became an engineer, ended up getting a job in Calgary with the city and um, being the person, the, the head engineer on the LRT project and responsible for, in many ways, for the sea train. Um, that hundred years difference in their times meant that society had evolved enough that Oliver Bowen's outcome was much more positive than the outcome that Elijah McCoy faced. So Oliver Bowen was recognized and celebrated for his accomplishments and today there's a facility in Northeast Calgary that's named for him. Um, I find, so I find the story of Elijah McCoy interesting because in part because of the story of Oliver Bowen and what what trailblazers have to do and how they can sometimes die without knowing what impact their lives and uh, you know like they were like the linebackers right opening up holes Elijah McCoy was a linebacker opening up a hole for Oliver Bowen and Oliver Bowen was a linebacker opening up a hole for me and I've had other young black 
writers tell me that I was the linebacker opening up holes for them. So I find, I, I think that story is relevant to the question you ask.